of papers that I find around the house. Um, so, you have now with your dangly dancer kit, you have interesting cardboard. I like this one here from a card box. Let's see. We're going to put this one here. And remember that your um, your dangly dancer, and I have a here by the way, here's a gal with a leaf head, and here is a sweetie pie with an apple head uh, and yarn hair. So, the first step is to cut out your, the, from the template, cut out the body part that you're working on. And I'm going to spend a lot of time with the head because it's actually the most finicky uh, part of this project. So I thought we should do it first. So I'm going to put the head on a piece of cardboard. I'm going to trace around it. And then cut. And since we're doing this uh, as a reversible project here, you got your head. Remember, you want to have, uh, so if these are hanging in a breezy area, you want to make sure that the person who's enjoying this can see something on both sides. So I'm going to find another piece of cardboard. Oh, I have this nice cow body. So I'm going to put this on the other side. But let me see, we're going to have these face to face because when they're cut out, they'll make a nice back-to-back -back pattern. And by the way, I would recommend, um, if you do happen to have a small scissors, to use a small scissors rather than a big one, simply because it's much easier to handle. Okay, so here's the head. Lay the, lay the yarn 
on there. Lay this down here. Lay this here. And um, the tricky thing about this is to do the hanging part. We're going to use a, a ribbon. And you can see how I'm folding the ribbon in kind of a U. I'm going to cross it over. And I'm going to put one piece of ribbon here. I'm going to put a dab of ribbon, dab of glue to hold the ribbon here. Press it down. Put another little dab. Glue is the best. <laughs> glue is the best. Okay. And then I put. Um, I put in your kit a clothespin, and the clothespin, you want to just clamp it together. It's going to stay clamped together for about 15 minutes. You're going to pinch the edges so it stays nice and snug, and you're just going to lay that head aside on your tray. We're going to go on now. If you're following along with the, um, on the instruction sheet, you'll see that I've done steps one, two, and one, two, three, and four. And now um, I'm moving on to the art tip. And um, the art tip really is just an encouragement for you to go through the papers. Um, here's the candy wrapper. Here's uh, something from the computer company. This is from a postcard. This is an old dictionary page, postcards, etc. Uh, things that, this is a Barrique's cup, but I thought, isn't that a wonderful pattern that you could make a, a dress out of? So I have gone ahead and I've cut out two uh, main body parts, and you'll see that I have uh, a front and a back. So I want you to, and look at how we're just kind of having fun with this. This is going to, we're doing the Dangly Dan, and notice how Dangly Dan has this wonderful floral pattern for uh, one part of his um, garment, and, and you turn it over, and it could certainly be a Governor Dodge. Um, now, we have, um, I've gone ahead and I've filled with some of these papers, um, so I'm ready to show you the next step. Okay, and the next step here, so now we are on um, step number seven, and so you're going to each of the body parts, and you will notice that on your template you have the right hand, the left hand, the right foot, the left foot, the left leg, the right leg, uh, arms and so forth. And this is just simply to help you remember that you're doing double-sided and it has to be left-right because of the, the little hands. And you see, um, let me see, these hands right here. You can see how I wanted to make sure her hands were, you know, they weren't both going in the same direction. So that's, that's the reasoning behind that. All right, so our next step is to uh, fiddle with the papers and to come up with um, to come up with the shapes and, and the designs that we like. So I'm going to say Dan. We're going to say this is going to be one side of Dan. This is one of Dan's arms, which I already started working on, and this is his other arm. And I wanted to show you how to do the the glue dabbing. You just you don't need a lot. Not a lot. This is going to be his uh, left arm. And we're going to, the reason why I have the uh, wax paper here is if this is a good way for you to tamp down the glue. So, and without getting glue all over your fingers every time you do it, you can tamp it down nice. Okay. Now I, I went ahead and did one little hand, and by the way, this was soap from a, a, a paper from a soap box, which I thought was kind of sweet. Okay, so that's going to be one hand. Here's the other hand. So 
little dabby dab, not a lot. Put it inside this little envelope here. Tamp it down so you don't get glue all over your fingers because then you're smearing it on everything and you will be sticking to things that you don't want to stick to. Okay, so you're laying out your body. We put these things aside, put them back in our tray so for to simplify the cleanup later. Um, now let's take a look at the legs and the feet and you'll notice that I'm putting together all of the body parts before I sew anything together. You'll see that our dangly dan here is sewed together uh, and before I do any of that sewing I'm putting together all of the body parts with the found papers and I did the same thing with Dan that I with his uh, arms and earlier and the in the hands I did <coughs> excuse me <coughs> here's one leg and here is a foot uh, so here's I do, these are postcards from uh, parks in the area and you should have these in your kit You've got um, two very decorative postcards and you've got two postcards of um, Wisconsin images so you can live it up depending on what your desire is. And this right here is an image from Governor Dodge uh, State Park where my family loves to go swimming. I'm going to glue that little foot. Oh, I didn't put it in here. I feel it's kind of wobbly. I'm going to put it in here. Leave that little foot. Okay, so here we have Dan's legs, his hands, his torso, and this would be a good time to check Dan's head. See how Dan's head is doing, and we're going to kind of pinch down tight here, so let's, let's pinch it down over here from this end. Just get that nice and, nice and snug. The next step is to sew the, the hands and um, the feet on. And I have included in here um, some waxed thread. And I have here um, some push pins uh, if you need to make a hole. Um, I like to use a, uh, let me see if I've got a rag or a close pin. Here we go, a little bit of a rag here. I like to put a, a rag underneath this uh, so I'm not punching into the table um, and we're going to do this see how I'm punching a little hole here nice little hole just to give that needle and thread a start take the needle go through that hole you just punched in your on the wrist of your shirt so you put the the, um, the thread through the each hole I like to wrap it around and come back and tie it I'm just depending on how handy you are with a needle and thread. You might ask um, an adult to help you. 
it's a little tricky at first, but once you you do one of them, you're going to feel confident that you can do you can do the others. There. There's one little arm and hand. Now we're going to do another one. I'm tying um, a knot at the end of my cord here. I'm a retired middle and high school teacher and uh, when I went into the middle school family and consumer living, I was very happy to see everybody learning how to sew. Threading needles and sewing on buttons, it was a, it's a good thing to see. All right, so we're going to punch hole here, and go in here. Wrap the thread around just once. Can you see clearly what I'm doing here? Just wrapping that thread around there, kind of loose, have it loose, because the idea is you want these, these little guys and gals to dangle in the wind. And as I say, these sorts of gifts that you make by yourself out of stuff you find around the house make wonderful gifts make wonderful gifts and especially in this time when we're at home not going out and about so much it's a wonderful time to use your imagination with what you have around the house okay so now we're going to do the same thing with the feet tie that knot first then we're going to punch a hole in this ankle and in this foot and in this ankle and in this foot and put this in my tray so I don't lose it I find that my little objects, it's got so many of them, they just roll off the table. All right, so we're going to sew this little foot on. about this waxed thread you'll see is that it it um, makes a nice knot and it won't come loose um, like other threads will cut off those loose ends there like doing an arm's length of thread. I get my needle going. Throw this thread here on the tray so that I can keep track of it better.
there, you see you've got your arms and your legs all done up. We're going to check that head again. Make sure it's all kind of pinched tightly. You might want to give an extra pinch around the, the places where you have the yarn just to make sure they're nice and tight. Get that back. All right, so now we're going to do the um, arms. We're going to punch a hole right there. Punch a hole right here. And um, you can see here on the, um, well, I didn't put the dots, but um, you're going to put dots. Oops, that doesn't, doesn't work. I'm going to have them in just a tad, the dots, so that um, you don't get too close to the edge because you don't want it to tear when you're sewing it. Uh, let's see now. There you are. Punch a hole there. Punch a hole there. Back in its place. By the way, my little tray here is just a lid from a uh, Oh, I don't know if it was from jam or whatever jar that we were recycling and I saved the lid. You can do that too. Oopsie daisy, I forgot to make a, tie a knot here. That won't work. came from a candy box. You know how some of those fancy chocolates come in nice boxes? Don't throw those boxes away. Save them. They can just be the basis for who knows what kind of an art project. There's one little arm and you can kind of wiggle it into place. And we're going to do another arm up here. so it doesn't roll off the table. Tie that little knot there. Okay, we're on our way here. So here's Dan's arms. Notice we have the front and back. And now we're going to do Dan's legs. Same thing. Uh, an arm's length. And by the way, you can use any kind of thread. I've just put in your kit some waxed um, cotton thread that I happen to have, but you can use a button thread is probably the best if you happen to have any of that at home, or else just a double thickness of any kind of thread if you decide you want to make another one of these with materials that you have around the house. All right, so let's see here. Let's put this on the needle.
Okay, we're going to take a look here, and we see we do have the dots there for the legs. Just going to punch a hole here. One right here. Notice how we we continue to use that fold up, folded up rag or old cloth. Don't forget about that because you just don't want to make a wonderful project and poke holes in your kitchen table. People won't be happy with that. <coughs> Notice how this dance Dangly Dan's arms are just kind of flopping every which way. That's okay. That's okay while you do this project. It's going to flop around because it's, it's, uh, it's called an assemblage. And that's what happens with assemblages. They're just meant to be kind of loose and uh, kind of free hanging. love it when I remember to put my little itty bitty things in a tray because it saves me a lot of kneeling on the floor looking for things later. Okay, so here we've got, here's Dan with his legs and his arms. The head's not on yet. We're going to check that head again. Yeah, that's nice, nice. Now you can see how here is an example of head. Isn't that cute? That little star there. Here's a head that was made out of a, an apple, and uh, I cut something in the shape of lips, so she would have that. Couldn't resist this. I thought this was so beautiful. And this is, a, I think, maybe a perfume box. Look at this butter box. Isn't that just what it needs? And this one here, I came across this frog head and I thought, wow, that's for me. So, yesterday when I was getting ready to do this project, I came upon all of my scraps. And I thought, oh, isn't that going to make a great sombrero? This is from a tea box. So we're going to cut that here. We're going to glue that. Look how that just transforms that head into somebody who habla espanol, verdad? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Of course, we need something on the other side. And here is from a, a Wisconsin postcard that uh, is, features the Mississippi River. And uh, these beautiful postcards were made by a teacher from Dodgeville High School, Gary Walls, who you've probably seen his postcards around around town. Now, what do you think? Is that going to make a nice hat? Maybe we'll up a little bit like this. You can see, you just got to let your imagination go. Yeah, 
cut. So we've got a sombrero on one side and a little, I don't know, kind of like a beret on the other side and a very big mouth. Look at that. It's just the circle from the, from the card box. We're going to press right here and a hole right here and the wonderful thing about this project is that it's one of a kind there's no there will be no other one just like it in the whole world and that's kind of a fun a fun thought isn't it Yeah, I'm threading my needle again. Don't need as much thread this time. You don't want it real tight. You want it loose because the idea is for this to dangle in the wind and a little breeze in your kitchen window or your bedroom window. Now, one last thing I wanted to add here is that um, I have these old dictionary pages. You know, I'm a, I'm a language teacher, and I love dictionaries. And this is an old one that my daughter had when she was in high school, and it got all kind of tattered, and, but I just couldn't bring myself to throw it away. That's the danger with found papers. You just can't bring yourself to throw these beautiful artifacts away. So, we're going to just make a little, do a few snips here, and we're going to make a, let's see, Dan, how are we going to give you a little bit of a collar and a shirt? Let's see, Dan, how are we going to do this? All right. <laughs> All right, we're going to fold the other one like that. The other side. <laughs> like a little vest. Dan will have a little vest. A tiny dab of glue, you don't need a lot. here's our finished product. Um, obviously you could put much more to it if you want. Here's Dan's vest made out of dictionary pages with a few little buttons. You have all these things in your kit. Have fun with it and share this with a friend.